Uh, hello, uh, welcome to Creative Connections uh, here at Arts at Lehman. I'm Bartholomew Bland. I'm the executive director of the Lehman College Art Gallery. Uh, and I'm joined today by one of our distinguished alumni, Jessica Spence, uh, who we are very happy to uh, have with us. Uh, she worked with us for some time at the Lehman College Art Gallery and has now a blossoming career uh, as an artist. Uh, and Jessica received an MA in arts education um, in what year, Jessica? Um, I finished uh, in 2017, but you know, everything transferred over. So 2018 was my official conferral day, you know. Yes, yes. Well, welcome. And we're, we're very glad to have you here today. Um, and so I thought I'd start by asking a little bit, bit, taking people back as I've been doing with a lot of our artists to their childhood. And um, what were the first things that kind of drew you to visual art? What are the first things you remember? Um, as a kid. Okay, well, um, well, first of all, thank you for having me, and um, it's great to catch up and talk with you again. Um, well, thinking about my childhood with art, I was really like just always drawing, doodling. I, I think a lot of kids do that, but for me, I felt like you know I wanted to learn more. So I remember going to my um, elementary art teacher um, for like you know extra supplies to like practice things at home. And I was just always like, like maybe I'll start drawing cartoons that I like. That was kind of like where it started for me. Like just like seeing things that I um, encountered in daily life. So maybe it was TV shows, cartoons or um, fashion, anything that I liked growing up as a child. That's what I would try to draw in my little um, notepad. I didn't have a sketchbook. So I just had, you know, my little <laughs> basic composition notepad, just Great. drawing. And then I finally did um, get, you know, better supplies when, you know, everybody told me that I was- Since, since we're so concerned with education here at Lehman, I'm wondering about your early arts education. When you were in elementary school, for instance, or middle school, what kind of arts education were you given? Were you, uh, was it a daily uh, art class, a weekly art class? Um, you, I'm trying to think. I can't remember exactly, but I don't think, it, I don't think it was daily. I feel like it was like twice a week. You were sent to, you were, you went to a special room and there was an art teacher and, yeah. and that kind of stuff. We did have an art class and we did have a uh, specialized classroom for it. So I was lucky in that way. And I feel like it was like a couple times a week. It wasn't every day though. But right. I, I do remember being uh, always anxious to go to that class. <laughs> <laughs> um, and your art teachers, did they make a special impact on you? Or were you, uh, was it just that you, uh, j just like the process of doing the drawing and the, and the different activities? Um, well, actually, you know, as a child, um, you know, I wasn't really thinking like, you know, long term, I was just thinking of making things, but they always did encourage me to, hey, mm. like, I know you like to draw, um, maybe here's try, um, like, tempura, let's try um, oil pastels, like, you know, introducing me to different materials that I wouldn't really have known about without them, you know, taking their art classes. That's, uh, that's very interesting. And so as you progressed along, um, now you went to Hartwick College for your undergraduate degree, is that right? Um, yes, what were, what was your sort of experience with the art at, at, when you sort of got to the undergraduate level? Um, well, I studied studio art there and for me, it was an interesting experience because um, coming from high school, you know, uh, we didn't have, um, you know, so, so many different facilities we had when I got to college, try um, photography, sculpture, um, you know, graphic design, as well as drawing and painting. So for me, it opened me up to different um, disciplines within art that I really didn't have an experience with outside of like just drawing and painting. So for me, it just like opened the, my the eyes. Technical, the technical uh, range. And, and then did you take some time off before between going from your undergraduate to your graduate or did you just move directly into that? Oh no, actually I took um, a, a long break. I, I graduated from Hartwick in 2008 and I didn't start uh, at Lehman until 2015. So in between that, you know, I was still making my art, but you know, it wasn't as, um, I wasn't as focused and I wanted to go back and I was like, you know, I wanna teach and I wanna be able to also focus on what I really wanna say with my art. So. 
within that time, I was just like, you know, I was doing little things, but it wasn't as focused on as it is now. And were you thinking at that time, do you think that even when you were doing other different projects and other, I'm assuming working in different places, were you thinking the whole time that that was your sort of end goal was that you wanted to be a, a practicing artist? Yes, I always wanted to do it, but it's just like, how do you even start, you know? I don't really know any people um, with, in like within my family or friends that are artists. And, you know, for me, it was like, I'm just going off of something that I always wanted to do and I didn't want to give up. Well, we've been, it's interesting because we've been running this series about becoming a designer um, to sort of encourage students to enter the field of design and how intimidating that is if you don't have a sort of a role model or someone you know in your family, as you said, or a family friend who might be a, a working designer. The idea of moving into the art, the fine art world and becoming a practicing artist is a very intimidating one. There's no easy path, right? The, 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 that's, a, that's a real trick. Um, and, and so, so how did you decide on Lehman and um, at what, what made you, after you had been out of school for uh, six or seven years, decide to, to move into the um, degree at Lehman? Okay. Well, for me, the location, it was close to where I live mm -hmm. and, you know, um, I wouldn't have to like uh, worry about how am I going to manage between like moving a completely different place for grad school when I was already set, like, you know, doing other things already. So for me, it was the access um, and the ease to get to the school. Um, and also um, because it was in New York, I would still have access to, you know, the different institutions here. The, so all the arts institutions you wanted yeah, uh, the yeah. connection to. And a lot of the professors, you know, they, they're practicing artists too, so. I feel like that would be, you know. Uh, and, and within your, yeah, that makes sense. Within your program, um, who were the faculty that, that had an impact on you as you were, as you were developing your practice? Okay, um, well, Danielle Tegeter was, I had a lot of painting courses with her. She was also my thesis advisor and also was able to take a painting course with um, Sean McCarthy. Mm -hmm. uh, so those two professors definitely, um, you know, helped me and were definitely influential um, as I was going through my studies at Lehman in regards to, you know, um, what I'm trying to focus on within my art. Now, you did art education, and did you have a particular reason to focus on that? I mean, you've done, I know you've done teaching, um, and how has that sort of played into your practice, the, uh, the experience of sort of, of trying to translate art or, or um, encourage younger uh, students to, to, I guess, become artists? Well, I always wanted to, you know, work with um, youth in art, and I actually was supposed to do uh, work in a program back in Jamaica. Um, that's where my family's from, like um, helping volunteering with arts program, but it never came to fruition. Mm -hmm. But I still wanted to be able to apply my technical skills and like share it with um, the youth. And also because I never saw any art teachers that looked like me. Right. So I felt like, you know, it would be important and it could, you know, show kids that, you know, there are other artists who look like them that are actually making art and maybe you could like connect to them in that way. So that's kind of what made me move towards um, education. And I, you know, I've, I've looked at your artist statement. Uh, tell me a little bit uh, specifically about how your Jamaican heritage plays into the work um, that you see. And we've shown a few of the images at the top of this uh, video of some of your work. Um, but maybe you could talk a little bit about the, your choice of subject ma matter, how it relates to your family and your heritage. Oh yeah, most definitely. Um, well, for one, the colorful, like the choices in color that I make um, is definitely inspi inspired by my Caribbean background, um, the housing and just like, you know, the, the scenery, uh, like that's really influential with my color scheme choices. But are you talking about having like a lot of bright coloration in your work? Your backgrounds are very beautiful, uh, those, those shades. Yeah, so I just think about, you know, when I'm, the color choices kind of connect to that way. 
but the actual subject matter, um, you know, these hairstyles, um, like throughout the, throughout, you know, he, uh, here in America, in the Caribbean, um, Africa, like all of these hairstyles are kind of connected. So for me, it was just showing like, you know, my, ex my own lived experiences, those in my family, maybe going outside, getting our hair um, braided on the porch or, <laughs> you know, before school. So it really was just me just showing not only things that I have experienced, but those who I know, my family and friends, just like showing that. Was that kind of the, is that, is that sort of a social time for you with when you're, you know, having your hair done or being braided? Is that sort of the significance it carries for you that it, it uh, is about a time of coming together and, and conversation that would be happening? Is that? Oh yeah, most definitely. I mean, not all the time because sometimes you're rushing and you have to get things up. Get on with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, sometimes it's just like, I need to finish your hair, but like if it's on a weekend or something and you know everybody's relaxed just at home it's more of like time you know catch up talking um could you just be talking about things that's going on in the news or you know just local things really um just a time of like bonding um and then so that's kind of your overt subject matter for most of the paintings i've seen you do uh i'd like to ask you about some of your formal choices that you're making um, the first question I would have is, you know, most of your paintings are from the rear where it, you have described your work as portraiture, uh, but it's almost sort of the portraiture at the back of the head and that's quite unusual. Why, why do you focus on the back rather than the, the front of the face? Um, well, it actually made a turn when I was in grad school because um, I, I wasn't really focusing on the face too much, but I would still show um, portions of the face, maybe like a profile or like the person would be looking down. But for me, the, the subject turned away. I feel like not only does it focus on the intricacy and of the hair design or the styling of the hair, but also because I want people to connect to it in a way where they don't see the face as much. So maybe they can see themselves in the work as well. And imagine maybe, oh, I remember when I used to do my hair like this or just going through those daily routines. And I feel like um, sometimes the face can be distracting because you're only focused on that particular person versus the actual movement and the action. The universality of the... Uh, the so, so for me, that's why I kind of went with that direction. Interesting. Uh, and there's so much a tradition, at least in Western art history, of women from the back and the and the view of them from the back. So um, in terms of artists who have in, inspired you, um, who, who are some of the names that you might think about as you've been moving along? Not just people you know, but sort of people in art history that have, have made an impact on you. Are there, are there particular figures? Yes, um, I like Anise, uh, sorry, Elise Neal's work. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm a big fan of Barclay Hendricks as well as um, Carrie James Marshall. Yeah. And like when I first saw, um, I saw all of their works in person. I got to um, visit their shows when they were here in New York. And I was just like, had such a huge impact on me. I was like, you know, I really never learned about these artists in school, mm -hmm. like um, you know, high school, you know, or even undergrad really. It was like when I got to grad school, I started to explore more of these artists and it really opened my eyes that, you know, there's artists out there showing, you know, you know, just like the humanness and, you know, just everyday people, people who, that are not really depicted like, you know, in the big museums or different galleries that I knew about only because I was told, you know, it was like going further and doing my research, you know, I was able to see these works and they really did inspire me and impact me, you know, while I was working on these paintings. It's interesting you talk about Barclay Hendricks. I can see some of the color relationships in your work to his. I've seen uh, he had a, uh, a full-length um, portrait that was against hot pink and it was sort of a pink on pink that was just yeah. absolutely mesmerizing. Um, and then uh, tell me a little bit more about technique because I, one of the things I find very compelling about your work is that it's, it seems hyper-realistic, 
but it's also very simplified uh, in the way that of the backgrounds being very simplified. Uh, the hairstyle is very elaborate, but a lot of the rest of it is almost sort of information kind of stripped out. Um, and, and how do you think about that? Like how much detail are you going to put into a, you know, a, a seemingly ostensibly uh, realistic painting, but it's very, the, the choices you made to sort of remove certain details just to make it more universal. Okay, um, well, like you said, with the, the focus on the hair, I, I think about like what the focus, what I wanna show. So for the ones with the flat um, backgrounds, I want to emphasize maybe the action and the hair styling um, so that, you know, you, the viewer, I mean, the colors all kind of coordinate and play off each other, but more so I want to um, like really get into the detailing of the hair and, you know, so maybe other areas won't have as much detail because then I feel it would kind of clash. So that's why I, for a lot of my work, it has that one color background and the clothes are like more simplified. It's not mm. too highly, you know, designed or, you know, but it really just goes off what I'm trying to show. So for now, that's the focus, but, you know, could change in the future, really. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and have you been, have you been uh, working on your art during COVID? I mean, have, uh, has this uh, kind of in, in some ways enforced solitude uh, I've been asking artists about how that has been changing their practice or or what thinking about their subject matter. How has that how has that changed for you? Um, well, definitely with COVID, it's been a little bit more difficult for me to move around and you know, you know, interact with more people um, that I would like to paint. You know, but mm -hmm. um, definitely I've been thinking about ideas of how can I push the work, how can I expand it, um, and what other messages can I show with my paintings? Mm. So I definitely have some things in the work. I don't want to say exactly what. Say, not now. Um, but definitely things are in progress. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. When you are uh, thinking about starting a painting, to what extent are, are you painting from photographs at all? Oh yes, I do. I do photograph the people that you see in my work. So I. Mm photograph them it helps me like you know for referencing and right. at the same time um I don't use like one direct photo so I, there might be multiple photos that I draw from right. well that, so I was interested are you, at, to what degree are you replicating what you're seeing either in person or in a photograph and to what extent are these kind of fantasias of you're like oh well the hair would look better if it was in this pattern and I'm going to start adding on or uh, do you do much of that or is it uh, straight from life do you try to um, you know, path. sometimes it works out that way where I don't have to do too many alterations with like editing, but then, you know, I might do a little, uh, some studies or like sketch out some things when I see that maybe it could actually look better if I change this. Mm. A lot of the time I do change the coloring of, um, you know, whatever the person is wearing or, um, maybe I, I feel like in their hair. the lighting on the hair, like, you know, it, as I go, you know, I kind of step back and be like, no, I think that could be changed. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, as I'm working on it, sometimes I'll just completely change out something that is not even in the photo. I do have a painting, um, a few paintings where I actually have done that. So it's like a mixture of a few photos, mm -hmm. but then also me, like knowing what I'm trying to show, I will edit that to, you know, get the final effect that I, was trying to get. Is there a painting that you've done so far that you feel comes closest to realizing your vision? You know, I'm always aware of talking to artists, they're always reaching for something and it's so hard to get there. And very oftentimes on any creative endeavor, you're never totally satisfied with whatever the, the, the outcome is. But is there a work that you're particularly proud of that we can show on uh, on the screen that you're thinking like, oh, this was really, I had this idea that sort of came out, uh, sort of was executed to the way I, I really hoped. Oh, yes. Um, I don't, I, I guess, roller set, it's a painting that I did last year with a woman like putting her rollers in her hair and 
for me, that one, it was challenging in that, you know, the intricacy of the rollers mm. on top of the hair and, you know, getting the right colors that, you know, wouldn't conflict with each other. Like that one also, it kind of like brought me back to my childhood, seeing my mother with her rollers and her hair around the house and the, the big bamboo earrings. Like I just saw a lot of girls with that in the neighborhood growing up and a lot of my friends had them as well. So it, it was just like something that technically I was pushing myself, but also it connected to like, you know, things that I've experienced. Very interesting, very interesting. Let's talk a little bit about the, um the uh, the practical side of having an art career, because I think that's something a lot of our students would be interested in. Uh, you know, nothing really prepares you entirely for, you know, you get your shiny uh, diploma and then you have to go out and you have to uh, try to start making a living as an artist. And you, of uh, the people who graduated in your class, you were really kind of one of the first ones out of the gate. You've been showing um, in a number of different venues. Uh, I know you've got work on view right now at the Hudson River Museum. Um, and tell me about your experience on the practical side of you know, the business of, of being in the art world. Wow, well, this is something that I have been really learning as I go, mm -hmm. because like, you know, nobody knows how things will turn out. And for me, like the different opportunities, you know, I'm very grateful for all of them. Like, it's really taught me, you know, what does this align with what I'm trying to do? First of all, you know, there's some things that I may have done earlier that, you know, I was just so grateful for the opportunity. I really wasn't sure if it's right, but you know, as a new artist, you want to get, you got to get, you get yourself out there, right? You're like, you can't be, you can't afford to be too necessarily picky about what the venue is going to be or. Right. Yeah. So, but you know, as you go on for me, personally, um, it's definitely important to know, have someone help you with the contracts if you're not sure. Like, you know, there's a lot of paperwork that goes on, um, along with maybe exhibiting in a show or working with different brands. You just wanna make sure that the contract <laughs> is, is good before you sign on. And, you know, you have to make sure that it aligns with what you're doing. I feel like that's the most important thing. Um, you know, and you just learn as you go, really. And that I'm still learning and I'm gonna continue learning. Um, I still have a lot of questions. Sometimes, you know, people will approach me about things and I'm like, you know, I need to do a little bit more research, mm -hmm. you know, on this, mm -hmm. um, so. Well, one of the things I always talk to artists about um, that I think isn't emphasized enough is the importance of documentation and sort of recording your paintings, recording titles, maybe giving a numbering system, that kind of thing. Because you see as people go along in their career, and they've been having long careers, how chaotic their, their uh, documentation can get about works that they've done and where that they've gone. Um, and that becomes become a, a problem in and of itself. So it's uh, good to start. Um, to start that early. Uh, how, I mean, now we've been talking about, we have up in the, we've had up in the gallery, you know, last February, before all this happened, we opened Young, Gifted and Black, which is a big survey show uh, that we had on view at the, at the college. Uh, and certainly uh, working with some of the artists that were in that exhibition, um, how has the last, I mean, how have you reflected on everything that's come out of the Black Lives Matter movement? and the role of um, African-American artists within the uh, network of the art system. Have you had a chance to reflect, I'm sure you have, on uh, how that's sort of unfolded over the last six months? Well, yes, um, it's definitely, you know, been a very trying time for a lot of us, but mm -hmm. I feel like these, this is not anything, it's not a new issue, it's just, more um, out there because, you know, cell phones and, you know, um, social media and everything. So the people are able to share what's going on in their communities mm -hmm. easier um, than in the past. But it's like, at this time, it's like, you know, enough is enough, we need change. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like protesting and everything. It's like, how, I don't know what else people can say to get like, you know, this is a serious matter and there needs to be a change um you know systemic racism you know inequalities within the communities um it's just like 
it's it really it's like what else can we say you know um to get that point across but for me like within my art because there's so much things going on in the world um not only here abroad you know it's just like i'd rather focus on positive uplifting things mm. because it's like it kind of takes my mind out of like all the things going on in the world it's not like it's not there but i'm trying to use my art as a tool of upliftment and empowerment and just showing um black people uh in our daily routines not in suffering or you know in pain but like upliftment just showing our daily routines and showing us as we are you know as we go through our daily lives so that's how i, I kind of like take take like you know things that are supposed to be painful um but so we're really trying to show our beauty because it's really that just like the the society we live in that imposes these things on us yeah you know absolutely and it's interesting i mean looking at your work it has always struck me in the few years i've been looking at it it's very i mean it's just sheerly beautiful it's kind of luxuriously beautiful in that way and to me in the world that's kind of a consolation you know art as beauty not necessarily just as social protest but as the idea that it could be a kind of reflection um and the kind of stepping into another world and you know the the sheer pleasure to the eye that your work brings i think is is a really powerful thing it's uh it's wonderful it must make you feel good to uh feel like you're putting something out into the wor wor uh, world that is that kind of magnificent thank you thank you it's uh it's been wonderful to talk to you and uh it's been wonderful to talk about your work and i wish you all the continued success uh in all of the things that you're doing thank you so much Thank you.